What is up YouTube? It is the Bill Outdoors here. Today is June 9th of 2023. I am here in Jersey. We are not in Maryland this time. The past couple trips I've made this year I've been in Maryland. We decided to come to the Garden State today and hopefully track down some new species. We're going to be after eye-tailed bowfin today. The bowfin species recently split up into two different species. So there's the eye-tailed bowfin which can be found around here. And then there's the ruddy bowfin, I believe that's gonna be more down south. So the eye tail bowfin is what we're gonna be looking for today. So I have my 6'6 medium heavy travel rod that I brought with me on vacation. That's got 17 pound fluorocarbon line on there. Uh, Pen Battle 3, 3000. And that's gonna be what we're using to target the bowfin we kind of got a catfish rig on there but to use that we need to get some cut bait which i'm going to try and catch using my normal trout setup the ugly stick elite six foot medium light and this is what we're going to be using for the snakehead we got a little popping frog here and this is the saint croix triumph six six this is just a two-piece rod the other rod I have is also a St. Croix Triumph, but that one is a four piece rod for traveling. So I'm gonna start making a couple casts with this popping frog while it's still nice and early in the morning. It's a little after seven right now. So looks like a perfect environment to house some snakeheads. So maybe we'll get lucky and catch one today. I have the net if needed. I don't know where I would really land it, but you know, I don't really have uh, proper landing net for this location. It's not very long, but I'll try and find something, make it work. So I'm gonna make a couple casts with this first, see if anything comes up. Then we're gonna toss around the trout magnet and try and catch some bait. I don't have any worms with me, so catching bait may be more difficult than anticipated in this marshy stuff, but hopefully we can find some bait to put on that rod for both in. So let me start casting. Guys, we got a fish on right away. I'm gonna try and flip them up here. It's not a very big one. All right, first cast. We got our first ever northern snakehead. What a beautiful fish. Oh my God. That is a beaut. All right, I'm gonna take a quick shot of this guy and then we're gonna dispose of him. That is a beaut. All right, guys, he's a little dusty there, but that is our first ever northern snakehead. Such a cool and unique spit, uh, species of fish. These guys are invasive, so we're gonna dispose of them properly after I turn the camera off. Um, but really, really cool species of fish. They probably got gnarly teeth on them. He's bleeding a little bit from where I hooked them. But we're gonna go ahead and take care of this guy. All right, guys. Well, the adrenaline was pumping a little bit there. No matter how else this trip turns out, that is gonna make everything worth it right there my first first ever northern snakehead very very cool just smashed the popping frog that's my first ever fish on a frog too never caught a fish on a frog before that snakehead It's so awesome. All right, guys, so we already checked off our snakehead for the list today. So I'm gonna try and catch some bait real quick and see if we can get cut bait on to catch some both in. All right, guys, well, after that snakehead, this spot hasn't really been producing. I haven't been able to catch bait for the bowfin I'm after. Um, so I'm gonna switch up to another spot that has bowfin. It won't necessarily have snakehead, but now that we got one, I'm not so concerned about that. Um, but it should be easier to catch bait there. And I should have just as good of a chance to catch bowfin there. So I'm gonna make a switch over to that spot. It's only gonna take about 10 minutes or so to get here. So I'm not wasting too much in the morning. And if that doesn't work, I can always come back here. Um, because it's only 10 minutes away. It's not 
not too far out of the way or anything like that. So I'm going to get my stuff packed up here, walk back to my car. And then we're going to take a bit of a drive and I will meet you guys there. Stay tuned. Right here where the bowfin are at, but I still need bait. So might be a little tricky. All right, after flipping this log right here down towards my feet, I was able to find a couple worms that I should be able to split into a couple pieces to get me some bluegill. And then we we're gonna to toss this bluegill on a bottom rig, kind of like a catfish type setup. And we're gonna let them sit in this channel here. These three creeks are all kind of combining into one. Muddy water, this should be good environment for a bowfin to live in they like to hang out towards the bottom and feed occasionally and they like to be around this vegetation stuff so we're going to cast probably one over here and one kind of in the middle over here to see if we can get a bowfin to bite but first we need to catch those bluegill otherwise we're not going to have much luck so let me go back to the main lake and try and catch a couple bluegill and then we'll be back over here for some bowfin fishing, hopefully. All right, guys, to ensure that I succeed in catching the bait, I switched up to a size 12 hook on my bait rod with a little tiny, tiny piece of worm. That way we can conserve the bait in case it gets stolen. And basically I'm just going to free line out there, which means I'm not gonna attach any weight. I'm just gonna wait for it to get picked up by a fish, specifically a bluegill. All right, guys, I finally got a bluegill there. That is a nice one. That is should make for some nice bait. We're going to try and get one more. That way we can just have a little extra if needed, but maybe not one this size. All right, guys, another decent sized bluegill, but we're not going to wait too long. This one's going to do. So we're just going to get this guy unhooked here. Peacefully put him to rest. And then we're going to use them for cut bait for bowfin. So hopefully these guys get us a bowfin or two. We'll see how my luck is. Maybe we won't get any, but the sacrifices would be worth it. All right, guys, we got our two baits in the water here. Both pieces of cut bluegill. I have one cast out towards the middle here and one towards this side to my left. Yeah, yeah, that's my left blank for a second um so yeah now we're just gonna play the waiting game hopefully a bowfin shows up there's supposedly some that have been caught in this area fairly recently so they should be around here now we just gotta wait and wait and wait and wait well guys i think i just missed my first bite because that got absolutely chewed up maybe i was too quick to it Anyway, we're going to use that piece as chum now. And we're going to get another bait out there. At least we got a sign of life. That's good. Oh, guys, I thought I had a fish on. Something took the tail all the way downstream. I think it could have been a turtle, though, because it wasn't pulling at all at first. Either that or it got stuck on a log or something and got moved. But I've been getting hits here and there. It's just haven't been hooking up with anything. There is a lot of turtles in here and turtles can be seen feeding on dead fish. So I wouldn't be surprised if I was just getting bites from an army of turtles, but I'm hoping that we're going to end up with a bowfin on the line here before I have to call it quits for the day. I have to probably be out of here at like 1, 1.30 because I got to be at work later today. And it's going to take me about 45 minutes to an hour to get home depending on traffic. So hopefully we'll get lucky and come up with a bowfin. All right, guys, I may have just had a hit 
on this rod. There was a little tug, but then it went slack. Guys, fish on, fish on. No, he popped off. He popped off. Dang it. Oh my gosh. I have one piece of cup bait left, but it's just a little, little nugget. But we're gonna see if we can get them to come back. Dang it. That's frustrating. I don't know if that was a bowfin or not. I didn't see the fish very clearly, but it definitely looked more elongated. So I may, I may have just lost my first, first bowfin. Definitely frustrating, but it's, it's, there's a silver lining, meaning that I haven't been just fishing at nothing all day. Uh, there is some in here. Dang it, that's frustrating. Well, hopefully that little piece of cup bait is, is going to do the trick. Otherwise, I'll have to try and repeat the cycle all over again. Find the worms and catch the bluegill. The bait got beat up again. <laughs> this measly little scrap is all I have left. I don't really have enough time to justify going and trying to catch another bluegill. Because I only have about an hour left to fish. Something like that. So since I still have this little scrap on the hook, I'm going to cast it out there one more time. And hope and pray that this gets picked up by an eye tail bowfin. I already blew several chances, so maybe I don't deserve another chance. Maybe I'll just have to wait until next spring. But, you know, this is, this is what we're doing now. We're down to the last straw. Well, just when I thought we had a fish, there's a big old snapping turtle on the end of my line. I'm assuming it took the bait, so that's probably gonna end up doing it for the fishing session, unfortunately. I am not even gonna attempt to get the hook out of this thing. I'm just gonna hope he pops the line. But he's fooling around in the weeds there. I don't know if you can see him. He got a little bit closer. He's not too happy, this snapping turtle. That's all marsh and mud, so I'm not going down there to try and free him up. I'm not breaking this rod either. So the hook pops out, or the line breaks. There we go. And the hook popped out. Sorry, Mr. Snappy Turtle. Oh, that's unfortunate. Why couldn't you have been a bowfin? Well, guys, unfortunately, I think that is going to end up doing it for today. I was going to stay until around 1 o'clock, but it's already 12.07 and I ran out of bait. I'm not going to justify killing another bluegill just for an hour's worth of fishing less than that actually so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today i know there wasn't a whole lot of action we got that northern snakehead right off the bat on my very first cast on the popping frog that was very very cool very pleased that that happened so not a completely wasted trip today and then we came over to this spot here had to catch a few 
bluegill, which proved harder than expected because I had to dig up a bunch of worms. Not a bunch of worms, I only found two. And then use that to catch the bluegill. End up catching two nice sized bluegills, used them for cup bait and threw them in here where these two creeks collide and was hoping for both in. We had two fish that are that were hooked that we missed the opportunity on. I'm assuming they were both in just because they looked um, kind of elongate. And that's the only thing I know that would take a piece of cup bait on the bottom other than catfish. I don't know how many catfish are in here. So I'm assuming those are both both in that we lost, which is good and bad. Obviously we know why it's bad, but good because we know they're in here. We know this is a spot we can come back to and hopefully have better success in the future. Like I said, I'll probably wait until next year closer to when the spawning season is, which is around kind of late spring, like um, late April to kind of early May type season. I don't know if it's that's exactly right, but you know, close enough. Around that time is when I should have better luck fishing for these both in. So we'll be back sometime next year to do that, but we'll have a lot more fishing adventures coming through in the future throughout the rest of the summer. So, you know, wasn't the most successful story today, but we did add one new species to our life list, which was the Northern Snakehead. I'm still at 120 species, however, um, species I caught last year, number 84, the Bridal Shiner. That was featured in one of my videos last summer. That one is actually no longer counting as a new species because it has been re-identified as a swallowtail sh shiner that just exhibited darker colorations, which is why it confused some people when I asked for ideas on what that fish could be. So you were still at 120 species, unfortunately, but we'll have many more trips hopefully this summer where we can add to that and get our numbers up. So once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Bill Outdoors.